Hello, my name is Rachel and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, we are talking about Bailey Gifford funds and trusts. So if any of you have watched any of my videos before, you'll know that I have been invested in Bailey Gifford funds and trusts for a few years now, and they haven't performed very well in the last few weeks or months. However, in 2020, a lot of Bailey Gifford funds did very, very well. So I've noticed a few comments on my videos asking what I'm going to be doing with my Bailey Gifford investments. So I thought it'd be really nice to put this into a video to explain to you what my personal position is with my Bailey Gifford investments. I'm also including a few quotes from people who actually work at Bailey Gifford in this video as well, as well as including a bit of information on the growth of long-term investments with Bailey Gifford. So first of all, the Bailey Gifford investments that I am currently holding are Bailey Gifford American, Bailey Gifford Positive Change, Scottish Mortgage Investment Trust, the Pacific Horizon Investment Trust, which are both managed by Bailey Gifford despite their names not having Bailey Gifford in them, and then also Bailey Gifford long-term global growth. So those are the ones that I'm holding at the moment. As I said, they performed exceptionally well in 2020. So the Scottish Mortgage Investment Trust and Bailey Gifford American both went up more than 100%. So if you're invested in that time like I was, you would have more than doubled your money, which is obviously fantastic. Also in 2020, the Pacific Horizon Investment Trust went up around 128%, but I wasn't actually invested in the Pacific Horizon Investment Trust for the whole of 2020. And the other two investments I mentioned, Bailey Gifford Positive Change and Bailey Gifford Long-Term Global Growth, both went up between 80 and 100% in 2020. So as you can see, Bailey Gifford had a phenomenal year in 2020. I'm going to include a quote here from Tom Slater, who works for Bailey Gifford. He is the co-manager of the Scottish Mortgage Investment Trust. And he warned back in May that following the best yearly return in the trust's 112 year history, that we would caution against elation after the past 12 months, just as we would counsel against misery following unprofitable years. So what he's saying here is essentially, yes, the Scottish Mortgage Investment Trust did really, really well in 2020, but he would caution against that elation of it doing really, really, really well, just as he would caution against misery of it not doing very well for a couple of years. And this is because Bailey Gifford really focuses on long term investments. So, yes, they might have some really, really good years. And yes, they might have some terrible years like this year is potentially looking to be for um, Bailey Gifford. Who knows how the year will pan out, but at the moment it hasn't been great. But overall, their funds do tend to beat the market over time. So yes, they do have awful years and yes, they have phenomenal years. But over time, if you're investing for the long term, they do tend to win out. So all of the Bailey Gifford investments that I made were always going to be long term investments. And that is still the case. So I will still be holding on to these investments for the next five to 10 years at least. So you might be thinking, what has happened to my Bailey Gifford funds? Why are they performing so badly this year? So Bailey Gifford's approach is one of investing in growth and then also in tech stocks. And growth and tech stocks have been hit particularly hard because of concerns over inflation and interest rate rises, and also a move or a rotation from growth stocks into value stocks. So obviously investments that are made in growth and tech stocks are not going to be doing particularly well right now. Bailey Gifford also focus on investing in young and fast growing companies. And for these kind of companies, the bulk of their cash flow will be seen far into the future. And these kind of investments are more likely to be negatively affected by inflation and concerns over interest rate rises. So James Budden, who is the director of marketing and distribution at Bailey Gifford said, in 2020, our funds saw exceptional performance and many holdings saw revenues increase exponentially during the pandemic. During 2021, the market has seen a battle between those stocks that benefited from the pandemic environment and those that have benefited from any recovery. It comes as no surprise that the format have been sold down in the short term. What matters is not one particular year's performance, but that the fundamentals of the companies we own remain sound and can offer significant future growth. 
So what Bailey Gifford are saying here is that they are not surprised to see that their funds have dropped in value over the last few months and that actually in the long term they're excited to see how they go. And this is how I currently feel at the moment. I am really, really disappointed, obviously, to see my investments drop. It's not a very nice feeling when you log on to your investment platform and see the investments that you've made have dropped. However, for me, these are always going to be long-term investments and I do plan to hold on to them in the future. So very quickly, I'm just going to take you over to an illustration that is on Fidelity's website, just because this made me feel quite reassured and hopefully it will make you feel more reassured if you are invested in these funds as well. So the Scottish Mortgage Investment Trust, that's obviously an investment trust, looking on Fidelity's website, if you had invested a thousand pounds 10 years ago in this trust, its value would now be 7,736 pounds and 71 pence. And if you just invested in an index fund which tracked the benchmark, then you would be seeing a return of £3,180.66 over those 10 years. So obviously, despite this big kind of drop in the recent months, this trust has still beaten the market over 10 years and it's a similar story over five years and still even over three years despite the recent drops. Then moving on to the Bailey Gifford American Fund, which has dropped dramatically. The story is very, very similar. So over 10 years, a thousand pounds invested in Bailey Gifford American would now be worth 5,941 pounds and 27 pence. And the equivalent benchmark which is the US large cap growth equity, would be sitting at £4,334.06. So again, over time, over the 10 years, these Bailey Gifford investments have beaten the market and outperformed their benchmark or index. Five years, it's a similar story, and also over three years as well, they're still outperforming. So for me personally, I try to look at it as a long game. Yes, I've absolutely hated the performance over the last few weeks and months, but over time, I do hope that these investments will continue to grow and pick back up and that over time they could potentially still be their benchmark. Obviously this isn't investing advice and this is just what I'm doing with my own personal portfolio. So obviously if you feel that Bailey Gifford investments are not right for you and you are no longer a fan of kind of tech driven growth stocks, then that's completely understandable. But this is just my opinion and telling you what I am doing. So as I said, I'll be holding on to these for the long term. I am rebalancing my portfolio this month and some of my Bailey Gifford investments for example, the Bailey Gifford American Fund is making up over 10% of my portfolio and I would like to bring that down to less than 10%. So I will be selling a little bit of, of it over the coming weeks and months and buying some different ETFs. But um, on the whole, I want to hold on to these Bailey Gifford investments. Again, I'm just doing a little bit of work to check that there isn't too much crossover between these investments because some of them are quite similar and I want to make sure that I've got the best ones that are right for my portfolio moving forward. But if you want to know if I am going to continue investing in Bailey Gifford funds and continue holding the majority of my Bailey Gifford funds, then the answer is yes. I will be holding on to them. Um, please do let me know in the comments down below if you have a different opinion to this or if you're thinking differently about these investments. Um, I'd be really interested to hear or let me know if you also hold Bailey Gifford funds and you're planning to do the same as me and you're holding on to them or buying more potentially at the moment. Um, please let me know. As always, this is not investment advice. Please do what's right for you, what's right for your risk level, risk tolerance, um, and what's right for your plan for the future with your investing. Thank you so much for watching and have a really lovely day. Bye-bye.